Hey, Foot Clan, a quick message from our friends at NHTSA. If you're ever stopped at a railway crossing and the signals are flashing, maybe you don't see the train, maybe, maybe you think it's moving slow, you're thinking, hey, I can get across the tracks before the train comes. Think about this. Even if the engineer sees you and applies the emergency brakes right away, it can take a train over a mile to stop. Over a mile. By that time, it's too late, and the resulting crash will be deadly. Stop. Trains can't. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday, October 16th. Week six on the horizon. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back with you. Set course for week six. Here we are, Mike. I can't believe it. No Thursday night football. We're all reeling. Just didn't have anything to do. I just walked aimlessly around the house. I just looked at things. Did some laps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did some dishes. Did some did some laps, and then just I just fell asleep. That's it. It wasn't very fun. <laughs> that is really boring. Yeah. So we've got, uh, but that just means you have an extra game this weekend, right? Monday. Yeah. What is it like two in the afternoon if you're out here on the West Coast? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Brooks, that means Brooks excited. has got a short day at work. Yeah, that's what that's, that means. <laughs> Brooks, sorry, fellas. I got to go home and watch football. Yeah. Yeah. It all kind of bleeds together. The job, the football, it doesn't matter. Uh, Brooks closed on his first house yesterday, and we are Woo! We're just thrilled uh, for him. We saw a picture. We know it's real. And uh, congratulations, Judge. Thanks a lot, guys. Got yourself a. Oh! oh! You get the party music. Party is uh, next weekend at Brooks's house. We're going to tweet out the address for everyone. It's uh, just let's yeah. have a party. And Bill O'Brien co-signed on it, oh. so unfortunately that that had to happen for him to get it. But, he has uh, excellent credit. Yeah, <laughs> he's got plenty of money, which is weird. Yeah, you know, like if Bill O'Brien feels like a guy that should not have excellent credit. He might have like actual financial credit but right. when they they call his references they're like eh, no we're not giving well, you this loan well i guess it's he, no street he takes, cred he takes upside down loans he's like uh i would like a a loan for five thousand dollars please and they're like okay sir what is your collateral and he was like uh my house yeah my house do they check your street credit yes they of do course both. they do they do regular credit yeah. and street credit yeah you never had that they give you the, the looks over uh, there's no way i would have gotten a loan though <laughs> All right, we've got more matchups on the show today. Uh, we had a matchup show yesterday, starts of the week yesterday. We also have some news to talk about. A big signing happened, and prop it like it's hot as well. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Woo! Oh, my. Oh. That was a little, a little scary, Mike. Oh, exclamation point. Yeah. An exclamation boop. <laughs> uh, this week's giveaway item. Each and every Friday, we give something away to a supporter at jointhefoot.com. It's a DJ Moore jersey. Mm. And the winner, Patreon supporter, the real Ray Finkel. Congratulations. You won a DJ Moore jersey from pristineauction.com. Is there a lot of imposter Ray Finkels there? There are a ton, Mike. It's one of the big problems we've got going on. Wow. I didn't Every know. Halloween, that's me. I'm Ray Finkel. Yeah. Uh, they do have to disclose it, though, so they're all fake Ray Finkel. Do you go as Einhorn or Finkel, Jason? We are one and the same, Mike. <laughs> I mean, we, I, th I was trying to trap you. I was trying to trap you, but you, you found it. We do have a giveaway for everybody, not just supporters, that we just threw up on the website. Isn't that right, Brooks? We got something new up there? Oh, yeah. Hey, <laughs> we've got, uh, we got a little bit of this. Oh, so it's smooth. smooth. Yeah, we've got a sign. That material is that. It's very smooth. Jersey? Is that silk? FootClanGiveaway.com. We're giving away a signed Kenny Galladay jersey. And you can enter for free at FootClanGiveaway.com. And then uh, all of the sweet, smooth jerseys mm. that we give away, they come from PristineAuction.com. And you can use the code BALLERS over there for $10 off your first item. 
You can follow the show over on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com for all the rankings, the start sit tool, player profiles, which now have video clips inside of them, which is pretty oh, cool. Oh, yeah. It's I, used, I used it last night. It was amazing. I was like looking at two players on the, the start sit. And then I was like, oh, what, what was said about? And then I click it, and it goes right to where we're talking about the player. It's fantastic. Yeah, this is uh, hand-curated video clips now on the website. So way to compliment it's yourself, like Jason. like scooped ice cream. <laughs> That's right. It's the best kind of ice. I always love it when they advertise that because it really does make it sound more delicious. It Do you does. want ice cream or hand-scooped? Yeah. I don't want no machine-scooped no, ice cream. No. Now, hold on. We're not all being fooled when they say hand-scooped, like as in, they literally are, they're digging There's, their, oh, their no. hands There's in. No, <laughs> no spoons here. <laughs> Is that what that means? Oh, man. They're just fisting? Like, yeah, brrr, yeah, yeah, they're just putting it all in there. That's great. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. It would be it would be dirty. It would be dirty ice cream. Yes, it would. <laughs> But it would have a different flavor to it. Yes, it would. All right. <laughs> All right. Indianapolis Colts, uh, there were some scares this morning. Every day I wake up and I check Twitter, and then I figure out what team tested positive, and then mm. every day we come in to do the show, and they might not have been positive. So the Colts, it was a scare this morning. I started looking at the matchup, and, it, you know, am I going to have Jonathan Taylor? And, you know, by the time we had the show ready, they're, they're cleared. The, week's, the week six game is on. That's, that's great news. Yes, it is. And the Falcons. The Falcons are cleared as well. All right. So far, so good. Saturday, you you mind your you business. You be kind, Saturday. Odell Beckham Jr. was sent home for illness yesterday. The Browns reported no positive COVID tests on Friday morning. All okay. right. All right. So three for three. Jason has a way of uh, bringing this up around the office because we've all got kids and they've had sniffles and different things. Right now, it feels like only COVID exists, right? But there are things like colds, mm -hmm. allergies, and you're going to have more of that stuff coming up in the wintertime. And uh, Beckham's dealing with a little sniffle or something. So hopefully we'll have him back out there. We did finally get the report. Mm. How you feeling, Mike? Uh, not. It's not good news for, for where you have drafted Clyde Edwards-Alaire uh, because the Kansas City Chiefs have signed Lev Bell. If I were Lev Bell, this is what I would have done instantly. Uh, I mean, I... I, I don't know what was going on in the contracts, but as soon as Andy Reid or whoever, as soon as Kansas City reached out to me, if I'm Lev Bell, it's, uh, heck yeah, I will be there immediately. So what this does for Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and then we'll talk about Lev Bell, is, I mean, it has to cap the upside of, and we don't know for sure what Lev Bell's role will be in the offense, but historically Lev has been a great goal line back. He is a great pass protector. The Daryl Williams is gone now. If you are holding on to him, I can't imagine that he will have any type of role in this offense once Lev is fully integrated. I still do think Edward Delaire is he one, he's the future of the running back position for Kansas City. This is just a one year uh half a season or three quarters of a season rental for Lev Bell. So dynasty purposes, Edwards is is where I had him before. I still believe in that projection. And he's still going to be the number one running back on the team. To me, like Lev Bell will be the back half of the timeshare. I don't know what's going to happen here. Right. And I think that they needed him. Let me say that first. I think they needed Lev Bell. They needed another uh, running back option beyond Clyde Edwards Alaire. It takes the pressure off of Clyde as a rookie and Lev fits the mold. He is competent in the passing game. He's bigger than Clyde is. It it really I mean, this week, let's make this clear. Lev Bell won't be playing for the right. Chiefs this weekend. He will be hopefully cleared to practice by next Wednesday with all the COVID protocols. So this week, this is the kind of swan song for Clyde in terms of chance at the biggest possible workload. And it's a big matchup. It's the Monday game. It's Buffalo. Jason, I'd be curious how you see this breaking down. Is Clyde a flex the rest of the way? Is Lev a flex the rest of the way? Is that how they both are viewed? I do see them both as as RB2 or flex options the rest of the way. This offense could support two running backs. We've seen that in the past. They will both be usable, but the upside is not there for either guy now. Neither one, uh, while both are healthy, project to be a real great fantasy option, and that stinks because you thought you were going to get that in Clyde Edwards-Alaire, 
Um, and you're not going to get it from either player. I will say this. While I expect Clyde Edwards-Alaire to be the, the first man up, to be the starter, the valuable role here of the pass catching and the touchdowns, I think that could go it, to Lev yeah, Bell. So could. he could end up being the better fantasy option, even if he's the quote-unquote two uh, when it comes to the pecking order. But in general, in the end, uh, long story short, I believe they're both you know, low end running back twos. And Miles Gaskin is saved. Yeah, I, yeah. The gas man continues. It was said it was between the Dolphins and the Chiefs. And then of course what happened is they found out that due to the COVID policy, it would be impossible for Love Bell to play the Jets this week, and he goes, Ah, mm. oh, I'm out. <laughs> that oh, was, nice. That was the only reason. <laughs> Let Can me Kansas City does play the Jets. Love Bell just went from the worst team in football to the best team in football, arguably. And um and got paid twice to do so. So that worked out. Thank you, Adam, is what I'd be writing him a thank you note. I'd be getting out my nice stationary. He's going to hand deliver it in a couple weeks. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be a game where uh, if you were choosing between which one to start, I'd be starting to live. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, some quick injury updates. Uh, a reminder over at jointhefoot.com. Uh, this afternoon or early tomorrow, the Injury Blitz podcast featuring Matthew Betts. Our injury expert will be released with the context of the Friday practice reports. So right now, Chris Godwin with the hamstring, he's still limited in practice. Do you expect Godwin to be out there? It's trending towards him playing this week. Everything that I've read says that they are hopeful he will be there. There's always a re-injury risk with a hamstring situation. You hope that he's being wise. Uh, we do expect you know another hamstring injury player. Devontae <laughs> Adams will be out there. This week and just you wait. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always here. Uh, Julio Jones, non-participant on Thursday. Uh, I don't expect him to play. And I, I I don't. I, I think this is good news because I mean I I kind of brought this up before, but uh, you know as as a manager who has Julio Jones in a couple of leagues that are he's really important to the team. I'm hoping he does not play because I don't want to deal with this week in and week out. And I feel like because Dan Quinn's job was on the line, he had to have Julio out there before he, you know, if, if this was a secure job and you, you know, your, your, your team is winning the games and your contract is five more years. I think they never would have brought Julio back out. Julio's difficult because players of his caliber don't need to practice to play. You know, if this sure. DeAndre Hopkins had this happen a couple weeks ago, he didn't practice all week long. He just shows up on Sunday and plays. So that's always a possibility. I actually think he will play. The confidence level is not high. Do you start him if he plays, Andy? I probably do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Melvin Gordon back at practice on Thursday after yeah. the DUI situation. Yeah. We think he'll be starting for them. I guess so. Uh, DJ Chark didn't practice, Mike. I, DJ Chark, I do not expect him to be out there. And similar to, I get part of the Julio Jones thing. Uh, I don't remember if we've talked Falcons yet or not. If Julio Jones is out, Matt Ryan is out for me. Yes. If DJ Chark is out, Gardner Minshew, Minshew is out for me. Yeah, and uh, I agree with you on that. And I saw Matt Ryan hitting hitting lots of waiver wires this week. Yeah, he's after what's gone it's on. It's been there. a tough year for him. AJ Brown didn't practice on Thursday. I'm not worried about that. This was TuesdayNightFootball.com that he had to deal with, mm -hmm. so another day off. And uh, Deontay Johnson returned to a limited practice on Thursday. Okay. Mike started the week as all Pittsburgh wide receivers, so uh, Deontay is one of them. <laughs> if, he's, if he plays, I'm playing him. All right. Any other injury news you guys want to cover in particular before uh, we a, get into the a forecast? A follow-up uh, for the Cleveland Browns. Baker Mayfield was limited, but it, it does sound like – or he was limited on Thursday. It sounds like we have a bit of more uh, positive report on him, which bringing that up, not for Baker Mayfield, but for Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry was back as well. And I would add that John Brown was listed as a full participant, which is great, but it was a walkthrough. So, and, and this was, you know, off the heels of a, a late Monday night football game. So uh, make sure you're paying attention or Tuesday night. All right. This episode of the fantasy footballers, before we get into the forecast, uh, we want to thank our sponsors brought to you by head and shoulders in Walmart. Uh, I don't know if you guys knew this. When guys are confident, they don't settle for anything less than 100. You're darn right. 95? No. Not yeah. this guy. Yeah. No. That's the sound of 95, Mike. Yeah, it is. Uh, they don't... Uh, it's the sound of dandruff. <laughs> are you the kind of guy that takes it up to 100? If you aren't already, you probably should be. Uh, in Head & Shoulders, they give you that up to 100% dandruff protection. You need to go 100 on the dandruff protection. 
We all wear dark shirts all the time. You got to be at right. a, you got to be at a hundred. Uh, and if you use it regularly, you can prevent up to a hundred percent of visible flakes and get hair that looks a hundred percent amazing. Uh, I've used Head and Shoulders for like ten plus years, well before they sponsored the show. It's just the go-to, and um, it's important for my hair game. I got to be honest, flake-free. Yeah, and uh, I ain't getting any younger, so I got to keep it. I got to keep it up there. I got to keep, keep it looking 100. right. <laughs> got to keep one hundred. One hundred till you can't. Till it's just zero. <laughs> <laughs> till there's nothing left to keep at hundred. Take your hair up to one hundred with Head and Shoulders. Available online at Walmart.com and at Walmart stores. Pick yours up today. And Foot Clan, we want to thank Theragun. The stress of daily life, it weighs on us all, whether you are an elite athlete yes. like me yes. or a regular person. Like Beckham Jr. Right, exactly. <laughs> Trying to get through the day. Muscle pain, <laughs> muscle tension, they're a real thing. In all honesty, I, you know, I'll put together a grill and I'll wake up like I got in a car accident. <laughs> Uh, that's why I use Theragun, man. That, that reminds me of a story oh, no. that Andy was hoping we would not bring up, but Andy was, in fact, playing some some VR video games yeah. and hurt himself. I mean, those... Was- I pulled both hamstrings playing VR. I don't oh, know man. how you do that, and I don't know if they like this tagline, but it, oh. it's Thera great. Yeah, no, look, Theragun is awesome. We use it in our household all the time. Especially after a, a real-time VR session. It's, it's uh, <laughs> If you don't know what it is, it's a handheld percussive therapy device. It releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth, speed, and power. And the all-new Gen 4 Theragun has a proprietary brushless motor that's so quiet, it's like using an electric toothbrush. It, these things are are truly awesome. They are super relieving. Uh, you know, it, you'll see them on the NFL sidelines, the NBA sidelines. Uh, we love them. Try Theragun risk free for 30 days. There's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4 with an OLED screen, personalized Theragun app, plus the quiet power. It you really need. does work. I have used the Theragun on on sore muscles a lot. It starts at only $199, which is a great deal. Go to theragun.com slash footballers right now to get your Gen 4 today. That's T-H-E-R-A-G-U-N dot com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right, a reminder, Saints, Seahawks, Raiders, Chargers all on by. We've got eight games to cover in the uh, – Remaining week six matchups on today's show. Yesterday, we covered the Texans, Titans, Bengals, Colts, Broncos, Patriots, Washington, the Giants, the Ravens, the Eagles, and then the Browns and the Steelers game. All right. Well, not a lot of wins to go around in this first matchup. Let's start here. The Falcons at 0-5. The Minnesota Vikings at 1-4. Vikings at home, four-point favorites, 54.5 over under. Oh, so close. Mm Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, you know, you said super uh, super relieving. The Theragun, they relieved Dan Quinn of his duties. Oh. And he is no longer oh. – they're super relieved of Dan Quinn. And uh, I want to know what's in store for this offense the rest of the way. We've seen, it, we've seen the Falcons string some, uh, you know, games together in the past, even with the bad starts. Uh, Matt Ryan, we just talked about it. If there's no Julio, you guys are out on Matt Ryan this week. Personally, yes. yeah. And then we really like the pass, the, the passing options on the other side of the ball. I mean, Kirk Cousins streaming quarterback this week. Absolutely. Um, we don't expect you know Dalvin Cook out there, but Alexander Madison, he should get the bulk of the workload at the running back position. Full confidence with Alexander yes. Madison this week. Yes, 100%. He finally gets his shot. I know. It, it, we, we finally get to see it where last year Dalvin Cook – unfortunately went down to injury and Madison went down at the exact same time. Uh, so th- this year we, we picked up Madison or you were stashing him and you get to use him in it. It could not come at a, a more perfect matchup for maybe a hurting fantasy team here. And if you look at the team's con it's, it's not just Madison, the player, the team has full confidence in him. Uh, there was a Gary Kubiak was talking about him and apparently they call him Matt, which is, Okay, that's a little little strange. Right. You no, know, Alex X Ma- Madison. I don't. But they go with Matt. Anyways, uh, he the quote basically was saying, when Madison is in, I change nothing. It, it does. I, my mentality for this offense changes zero percent. That's nice to hear be, because he has full confidence in Madison's skill set. Yeah, he'll be. 
very valuable in this game. The Falcons defense is vulnerable across all positions, and so we like pretty much everybody in Minnesota. Adam Thielen has been a an absolute monster this year. Yes, he has. Especially in the red zone. Seven of seven for five touchdowns in the red zone. If I'm Kirk Cousins, you know where I'm going in the red zone? Adam yeah. Thielen. Yeah, where it's 100%, taking it up to 100 in the red zone. And then Justin Jefferson, I think uh, – I did have the question today, and let me pose it to you guys. If you had Thielen, who you have to start, mm -hmm. and Justin Jefferson, are you comfortable in this matchup just playing both of them with the same kind of you know, flex I mentality am, you have with Jefferson? I am far less comfortable playing Justin Jefferson if Julio Jones does not play. And the reason why here is because – the. Look, you just said it. The, Minnesota wants to change nothing with mm -hmm. Alexander Madison. And if they're in the lead, and if they're able to yep. you know, be controlling this game, Kirk Cousins is not going to throw for a whole bunch of yards. Um, this matchup looks so juicy because Atlanta's just been bleeding points. You want to know who they're bad against as far as fantasy position? All of them. Play, play your running backs, play your quarterbacks, your tight ends. Oh, my goodness, yes. But the reality is if – Atlanta can't keep up and usually that's not an if they always keep up but without Julio that offense does not see I think they the keep same. up <laughs> well and that's the question because it's is, Minnesota's defense and it, Vegas has this has such a high over under the implied point total of 25 for Atlanta you know they're not uh, Vegas is not counting on Julio Jones in this game so so if, without Julio Jones you are confident that the Falcons We'll keep up. Okay, so who outside of Calvin Ridley then is going to get the job done? Who knows? Okay, no idea. Somebody, Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley, you can play. Yeah, because, he's a strong start. Uh, he's the RB ten on the season. We have him at thirteen this week. Minnesota's given up the eighth most rushing yards. Whether it's Gage or Hurst or Zacchaeus or Brian Hill, I I have no idea. Like I don't have any confidence on deciding because every week we've tried to take that shot on Atlanta's secondary options mm -hmm. and it's gone awry every single week. Yeah, it has. The the question, Jason, you I mean you you kind of glossed over here. You talk about tight ends are a great play against Atlanta. Irv Smith, tight end for the Minnesota Vikings, second year Irv Smith, and uh, he shares, you know, the tight end position with Kyle Rudolph. But thirty one routes for Irv Smith this last week. Uh, he actually was the tight end 13 because he turned five targets into four for 64. He's an interesting player. Is is Irv Smith someone you are willing to dive into the the barf of the tight end position and play? That yeah. sounds disgusting. Well, yeah, it, it I mean, is disgusting every single week. I would know, never he, dive into the barf. He's very similar to me to my start of the week, Darren Fells, in the sense that he's a waiver guy that this late into the season when all the uh, the Hawkinsons and the fans have been picked up and they're already rostered, if you've gone to buy with Darren Waller uh, or Jared Cook and you need someone, I think you can pick up bigger. Okay. But I would rather go Fells because of Kyle Rudolph. If Kyle Rudolph gets the touchdown in this game, nobody's going to be surprised. Yeah, and just for context, I know last week was nice. It was against Seattle, and Irv had a total of two receptions in the preceding four games. Yes. So – could be anomalous here. I think he's a very talented player, but in this offense with Jefferson emerging. I so love Big Irv. Yeah, so he's just more of a watch for you, Andy. Yeah, watch okay. from the sideline. Not on, not on my bench, I don't think. Okay. The Chicago Bears at 4-1 and one, taking on the now 3-2 and two Carolina Panthers. Get it done, Carolina. And, Pan and the Panthers are favored in this game. Uh, they are one-point favorites at <laughs> home, a 44.5 point oh. over under. They are getting it done. The magician's not going to like that very much. No, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit of four and one mirage with Chicago. I don't think that they're a bad team by any means. I don't know if they're this good. And then Carolina. That was a big win last week. It, it was over a big Tampa. Win. Absolutely. And they deserve respect, uh, their defense especially. This will be one of those things where Carolina has been able to do a lot on offense over the last three weeks with this winning streak, including Mike Davis. Um you know, we see what Robbie Anderson's been able to do on the year. But how does it match up with this Chicago defense? Chicago has been outstanding against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. I think that probably takes them off the board and or takes Bridgewater off the board. Yes, it does. They, I mean, they held what what was Brady at? One touchdown, yeah, 200 something yards. It just poor game. And so, yeah, Teddy Bridgewater, 
it's really an exciting story that what Teddy Bridgewater has been able to do this year with the Carolina Panthers, but he's out for fantasy for me this week. Mike Davis is 100% in. He's been unbelievable. And now, you know, get a little revenge game oh, narrative action. Yeah. Go show Chicago that they made a huge mistake of of letting him go somewhere else. Did you hear what Matt Rule said oh. to him and said told him what to do? Was it murder? <laughs> Oh, Ja Rule getting it done, man. <laughs> the, the best. There are people who don't get that joke, <laughs> and it 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 tickles me. Yeah, they, like if if you don't know who Ja Rule is, <laughs> he's the coach of the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of crazy to see Mike Davis have this level of success because he was a Chicago Bear. Jordan Howard was a Chicago Bear. And here we are with David Montgomery. Yeah. But, Mike, you love him this week. Yeah, yeah. Mike Davis is in. The, just the opportunities are are there for him. Robbie Anderson, he is the Carolina Panthers' number one wide receiver. He's in for me. The The volume is just too great. And this is a matchup where I am trying to pivot away from DJ Moore if I can. Yeah, the matchup isn't good for Teddy or for the wide receiver core. I, I agree with you. Robbie is someone who's had such target volume you could play him. But I have seen some lineups where I've recommended benching Robbie Anderson because they have other really good options. This is sure. not a, a great matchup. On the on the Bears' side of the ball, it's easy. It's easy every week. Here's It doesn't matter the matchup. David Montgomery is going to get enough volume. You pretty much got to start him. But this week is in particular uh, This week great. is fantastic. Yep. If it's bad, okay, you're still probably going to start him. <laughs> Allen Robinson. Is just a phenomenal wide receiver. Next, <laughs> like that's, I mean, maybe what? there's Jimmy, questions Jimmy on Grandpa. Jimmy Grandpa, but I feel like it's a two man show. Well, I don't, I, I'd be playing honest. Jimmy Grandpa over Irv Smith. I'll tell you that. That's fair. That's mm. all I'll tell you, though. That's yeah. it. That's all I got for you. <laughs> and Irv Smith, to be clear, was not on your roster. Watching from the sidelines, not from your bench. Yeah, yeah, which is also the case for Jimmy Grandpa in all of yeah. my leagues. But I will say this: the the target volume for Robbie Anderson has been just to highlight it. It's been incredible. Uh, he had eleven two weeks ago, twelve last week, eight receptions each week. He will get the targets in this game, whether they turn into you know a yards after the catch at twelve and fourteen like the past couple of weeks, maybe not. But I am still confident to play him, especially in PPR formats. He has really been outstanding for yeah. fantasy purposes. And while DJ Moore came through last week, it was it was one big score. Yeah, I mean, he still only had five one targets. Big score. Oh, Arthur! <laughs> Did, uh, the Detroit Lions at one and three, taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are one and four now, on a bit of a tailspin. Lions are three and a half point road favorites. It's a fifty four and a half point over under, and uh, Jacksonville's been struggling on the defensive side of the ball after that kind of surprise week one where we're like, okay, maybe they're not right. Maybe they're not the worst team in football. Maybe this defense is, you know, the youth that they have, they're, they're putting it together. Not this time. No, no. So, uh, yeah, I, I really like the Detroit lions in this game. I like Matthew Stafford. He's my start of the week. And I love Kenny Galladay. Uh, we haven't got to see a ton of Kenny Galladay so far this year, but he is an elite wide receiver a top five type of talent. And uh, I think the bigger question mark, if you have Galladay, you're playing him. One of the question marks I have is, look, we retired Marvin Jones. And then Marvin Jones hit waiver wires. And then I saw Marvin Jones signed by brand new fantasy managers. And they want to know, is this a Marv week? Yeah, you, uh, the, the absolute truth is you can never know when the Marv weeks happen, but you can always plug Marvin Jones into your starting lineup and take that shot. I will speak... From experience, when I look at my opponent and I see Marvin Jones is on the bench, I don't get excited. I'm not happy about that. I don't go, oh, thank goodness, Marvin Jones, he stinks. I go, oh, no, please don't let this be the three-touchdown game. Okay, makes sense. Uh, running backs on the Detroit side, Adrian Peterson had not practiced with an illness on Thursday. Do we have anything new on Adrian Peterson, Brooks? I know that you are a member of his fan club, right? Nothing yet. Okay. All right, give him a call. Let me let, let me know. Uh, nothing new. If if Peterson missed, are you taking a shot with DeAndre yes, Swift? One hundred percent. Yeah, the matchup is so good. If Peterson was out and it was just a a, a two headed running back core, I think I'd put Swift in my lineup. Hawkinson is Mike's start of the week at the tight end position. We have him at six on the week. Great matchup. Jacksonville giving up fourteen points a game to the opposing tight end position. 
or a opposing tight end. Mm -hmm. uh, Gardner, I, I'm not excited about Gardner in general week to week because I feel like we haven't seen very much ceiling. But you mentioned if Chark's out, you're really off of Gardner this yeah, week. Yeah, the matchup is it is super juicy, and it it's not that Gardner has been bad. I mean, he is he's like a fringe QB one. 13th, 9th, then he he bombed against Miami, but then he's been QB 13 in back-to-back -back weeks. That That's not submarining your team by any stretch. You just – Gardner's a streaming option. And yep. if his number one guy – number one guy, DJ Chark, is out, then I just – it caps the ceiling of what Gardner can do, and I would be going over to, to Kirk Cousins. LaVisca Chenault has been an incredible rookie. He has been – his uh, opportunity is jumping up each and every week. There just isn't the high-end wide receiver play between him and Keelan Cole, who was also in play in this matchup for me. Uh, but those two guys combined don't make me want to stream Gardner over the other options. And both, if, if Chark misses, Chenault and Cole are break glass emergency uh, starts. Yeah. I think, to me, LaVisca's not even a break glass. He's He is a... He's a wide receiver three who should be played or flexed. Yeah, eight in this targets week. last week, seven catches uh, the pre previous two weeks. It was six targets each week. So you're going to get something out of him. Yes. Which is nice. And you've seen him more and more incorporated into the passing game. If you look at the game logs for him in the beginning of the year, he was getting a, a lot more carries mm -hmm. and being utilized as more of a, a you know a, a gadget type of player. Now he's just one of their most important wide receivers. All right, let's move to the next matchup. The Miami Dolphins are hosting the New York Crowders, and the Dolphins are nine and a half point favorites. It's a forty-seven point over under. Can we see if we can break a record here for the Ooh. least amount of time talking about a team? Yes. Oh, yeah. Start Jamison sure. Crowder. Uh huh. Nothing else. Done. Miami Dolphins, though. Ryan Fitzpatrick. I like that someone wrote revenge game in here. That is very true for very many games for him. I, uh, from what I know of Ryan Fitzpatrick, yeah, he does. he's not a revenge guy. No, he doesn't care. He's willing to bygones or bygones, play man. wild with, and with, free against anybody. With Ryan Fitzpatrick, this, this is a man who has no, no cares or worries in the world. 11th, 6th, 10th, 3rd. The last four weeks for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Let me remind you, he played Buffalo in that stretch. He played San Francisco in that stretch. Still ended up a top 12 quarterback in those matchups, including eviscerating the 49ers last week Fitzpatrick is we've already talked about several middling quarterbacks you know do you start Matt Ryan without Julio mm -hmm. do you start Gardner who's been you know quarterback 13 13 13 I I would I would take Ryan Fitzpatrick here over over the lot of those middling guys oh absolutely and the third most popular start sit question on the website is Gardner or Ryan Fitzpatrick that's not even uh, close I'd, to me yeah I'd go Fitz um Gardner you Gard not love Ryan Fitzpatrick is there anyone out there that is annoyed by, like he's so it's, it feels it's, like it's always a one week situation like he could dis he could poof disappear at any moment the way it feels is like you're like I'll get by with him this week you never feel a permanence we we highlighted earlier uh, I think it was maybe in the draft season talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick because at the time you you couldn't feel confident drafting him they had, the team had just picked up to uh and it was the but what if they go with Ryan Fitzpatrick? Because the dude over the second half of last year was the quarterback too. And since Yeah, but uh, Mike, he's only the quarterback six this year. It's just he's Yeah, he's, he's great. Give him his respect. He's yes. not gonna demand it and he's not gonna go for revenge, so we're gonna demand it for That's him. That's right. He's a player that if he was missing his football helmet, he would still go out there and play That's quarterback. Right. He would. And that's what I'm looking for in a quarterback. If someone else was missing their helmet, he'd give them his. That's right. And he'd and play he, without it. And then he he ain't sliding. <laughs> it's no. going at first. But like, uh, he makes know, Devontae Parker a guaranteed lock every week, which you know is who, outstanding. You know who would help you move? Oh, Fitzpatrick. You know who, Alex he, Smith. Alex Smith would, but he's because <laughs> he's reliable. But Ryan Fitzpatrick would do it. You wouldn't even have to get him pizza. No. Ryan Fitzpatrick would he'd just bring do the it. pizza. He'd, he'd bring be like, pizza. what's up, he dude? Would. Yeah. He'd pick you up from the airport at 4 in the morning with the coffee there for you. Yeah, you, that's that's you, the type of man Ryan Fitzpatrick. You probably is. weren't even ready to move till the next day, and he'd show up a day early and be like, "Let's get this done." And you would show up, and your entire house is already moved. And you know he'd bring Tua with him. <laughs> Tua would help him out. <laughs> Tua loves him. All right, Miles Gaskin started the week at the running back position for me against yes. this Jets defense, giving Gas, up uh, almost twenty-eight a game, and and he's just establishing a 
a bigger role, not a smaller role in this offense. Devontae Parker, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you, Give me the lay of the land on your Mike Gesicki situation here because it, it could get better, it could get worse at the tight end position. He's had a couple big weeks, a couple lo- bad weeks. Uh, Gesicki to me is is great. I mean, in, in the sense that all tight ends outside of the top guys have good weeks and bad weeks. He has enough targets, has enough talent, has enough athleticism to have great weeks. I'm, I'm pretty much always going to be starting Gesicki if he's one of, you know, if, if that's the guy that's on my roster, I'm not looking to the waivers. What about Preston Williams, Jay, after he, he finally had a, a big game this year? I, I love Preston Williams. I think he's a talented wide receiver. He is a flex possibility, but I would prefer to not. Uh, Keelan Cole or Preston Williams? Ooh, that's a good Keelan one. Keelan Cole. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think DJ Chark plays, so Keelan okay. Cole. If Chark was playing, then then I would go Preston. Snap counts on Preston Williams the last couple of weeks, 61%, 60%. was a nice week last week, uh, but had a 47-yard catch, so that's that'll help. Yeah, my, my final note here, you aren't playing him, uh, but from the New York Jets, LaMichael P. Ryan, he is How a, dare you, Mike? Is I a, told you. Oh, man. I, mean, I was come looking on. forward come to on. asking nope. the judge if we did it. Nope, nope, my, this is happening. No. If you have an extra spot on your roster – I would throw the Michael P. Ryan on your bench and just in Look, case. I, I know why you would say that, but you are forgetting the head coach. <laughs> Number two. I, I get it. I get it. All right, the Green Bay Packers at four. And, I'm not going to let you keep talking about the Jets anymore. I'm not going to let you Next do it. Next week we'll get it, Andy. Yeah. We'll get the record. The Green Bay Packers at 4-0 and taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sitting at 3-2. and The Packers Oof. are one-point road favorites. <laughs> it's a 55.5. 55.5. Over under. And, uh, you know, that says something about where the Packers are right now. Going on the road to Tampa, still favored. It's a tough road for Tom Brady right now with these matchups. This, and, uh, this is such a good game. I can't wait. From Forget fantasy. Like, I can't wait for this football game. Uh, I mean, Brady and Rodgers, mm-hmm. both teams playing well and in the hunt. This is It's a battle awesome. of the Bays, too. I mean, you got Green Bay and you got Tampa Bay. Oh, Bay dominance. You want the cold or the heat? Is yeah. Michael going to be there? Michael oh, Bay? I hope not. A lot not. of slow-mo explosions. Explosions. <laughs> explosions everywhere. Transformers all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your Transformers? Yeah. Can we hear that again? <laughs> That, were you, were you that's, moving? A, that's a car shop. That's not a transformer. No, I, I didn't mind it. it sounded well, pre- I mean, my, I my transformer a was a car. So I know, but that, that sounds like more like you're changing the tire. <laughs> 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 well, he was. He was changing the tire on one of his transformers. Into a leg. All right, Aaron Rodgers. We have him at quarterback five on the week. He leads the NFL in percentage of 20-plus yard attempts because he's Aaron Rodgers. He, he loves it. He's and, back, baby. Yeah, and even with Alan Lazard leaving, uh, he gets back. Devontae Adams this week, that is spectacular. And the points should be flowing in this game. Brady's been a little up and down. Uh, last week was the quarterback 19. We talked about Chicago slowing them down. But the weeks before, the past uh, two weeks, second, ninth at the position, Ronald Jones is Jason's start of the week. Um, For good reason. Yeah, he's been great. And now he, he also doesn't have to deal with Love Bell. That was a little bit of a what-if situation. Keyshawn Vaughn, are you uh, still putting him on your bench, kind of waiting and seeing? It wasn't anything special last week. Well, it, it was, in fact, uh, the opposite. The opposite of special because he finished with negative fantasy points. I I don't mind that if you have that. If it's a deep league, I wouldn't drop him, but he uh, – that was bad. What about was, Fournette? Really bad. Are you, what are you doing roster-wise with Leonard Fournette? He Goodness is gracious. expected to be active again. Uh, I see I would I would be rostering Fournette and not rostering Keyshawn Vaughn. Uh, in truth, I don't really want to roster either of them. Right now you're you're happy with Ronald Jones because Leonard Fournette's been gone, but if if you know Fournette is active and and just takes 15 carries, I, th- there's a non-0% chance that happens. That would be really upsetting with how good Ronald Jones has been running. The matchup is great, but I, I'm not really wanting to play with either guy, but I would put Fournette ahead of, of Vaughn. All right, fantasy players know they're playing Aaron Jones, but I just want to highlight something for you. He is tied for the second most red zone targets of any pass catcher in all of football. Wait, running back you meant, right? No, I didn't. Number one, though, Jimmy Grandpa. It makes sense. Number two, Aaron Jones. And uh, amazing. 
you know, Tampa Bay, I think you can get it done. Aaron Jones can get it done against anybody in any matchup because of the involvement on in both facets of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, e- even those fantasy players get a little frustrated seeing Jamal Williams out there and the involvement that he's had. Aaron Jones is locked and loaded. Devontae Adams is locked into your lineup as well. I think that's probably where I draw the line, though, on the Packers side of pass catchers. Are, are you interested in chasing what Tanyan has done so far now that Devontae Adams is back? Would like would you play Tanyan or Mike Gesicki since we just brought him up? Oh, that's a great question. I, I would go Gesicki. I I would go Tanyan. I would take the chance that he's going to be on fire. Okay. So even with Adams coming back, we know Alan Lazard's out of this lineup. That's why. It, it I don't expect Robert Tanyan to continue what he's been doing, but you still need a number two option on this team. That's not the that's not a running back. What about Hawkinson, who's your start of the week? I would play Hawkinson. Okay. That makes sense. Godwin, we think he'll be back out there. If Godwin misses this game, though, are you taking a shot with any other pass catchers other than Mike Evans? No. I mean, if you want to take a chance of getting a zero, Scotty Miller. Yeah. What are you doing? He's waiting for everybody to bench him so he has a good game. Rob Gronkowski? Nope. Nah. No? Nope. No. I mean, I... uh, Darren Fells, I, I would rather play Big Earth than Gronk. Oh, my goodness. That's an embarrassment. I agree. Three for 52 last week for Gronkowski in yeah. the first game without O.J. Howard. I mean, what was Big Irv last week? Well, I'm just saying he's been – at least Gronk's been targeted <laughs> every game of the year. Irv had two zero-target games. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll – uh, yeah, I, I'll do it. I'll water bet you, Big Irv versus Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> Let's go. Just These the are my fun. favorite kind. Absolutely. Okay. Water bet. This is going to end one for 17, one for 12. Yeah, I can't wait to win with 17 yards. We had a water bet last week, <laughs> and it was Justin Jefferson versus Juju Smith-Schuster. And I went and checked Juju's line first, and it was like, I don't know. It was like it was three, four for 22 yeah. or something. I'm like, cha-ching. And then I went and looked at Jefferson, and he was like three for 23, and I'm like, yeah, I won. Curse splash. Yeah, we all lost that That's one. That's true. All right, anything else from this matchup you guys want to highlight? Mike Evans has a really tough matchup uh, this week. He does. Uh, he's still Mike Evans. You're still going to play him, but lower mm-hmm. expectations. Okay, all right. The Los Angeles Rams, Sunday Night Football at 4-1, and one, taking on the San Francisco 49ers. This one's interesting because uh, the 49ers a little bit beat up on defense. You saw Ryan Fitzpatrick go to town last week. The Rams are three-point road favorites. It's a 52-point over-under. San Francisco's in a bit of trouble in this vaunted uh, NFC West. They're 2-3, and three, and they're not favored in this one. Jimmy Garoppolo looked B.A.D. last week, as, as bad as it gets, really. He, he looked great on the bench, though. Oh, so handsome. So handsome. That was a handsome benching and a necessary one. I don't know what's going on with the 49ers right now. I know that they're beat up. I know that there's a little bit of unpredictability on offense. Jeremy Kinnon disappeared. I mean, he was not used, involved. I would not be playing him this yeah, week against no, the Rams. I'm not it, playing him. He's on, he's on my bench, but I could see him still having a decent game. Really? I, I'm confident in Kittle because you put him out there every single week. I'm confident in Mostert because of the, uh, the involvement in the offense. But beyond that, probably not putting Debo in my lineup. I'm not putting McKinnon in. I'm not starting a quarterback for San Francisco. Not putting Ayuk in. Ayuk in. Ayuk out. Oh, right. oh very Ayuk nice. Ayuk out. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, I unfortunately have to play Debo Samuel in our league of records. So if you want to ride with if you, you, if you want to be on that ride, know that I am playing Debo Samuel in our important league. The the good news. Well, in that case, Mike, uh, let, oh, me, let me at least drop. Let me at least power you oh, up. Pump me up. Thank you. Uh, is he ready to go full? Now it's you're possible. A man? Here's here's what I will say. The the matchup isn't great against the Rams, but looking at the a not the actual fantasy finish of Debo Samuel. Look at what he did. He went from thirty four percent of snaps all the way up to eighty nine. He has retaken his job as the number one wide receiver for the San Francisco Forty ers Sure, he finished with two receptions for nineteen yards, but he had eight targets. So. It's it's not the worst play in the world. And in fact, like I, I don't really want to play Debo this week. Like I said, I'm kind of backed into it. But I think that Debo is a good trade for target. If you can get that done over the weekend, Debo, if you believe in the player, he is he will quickly be back to 
being the the alpha, the number one for this passing I, attack. I agree with you, Mike. And I you asked a couple weeks ago whether, you know, Debo, Brandon Ayuk, whether you'd keep Ayuk around. This is what you wanted to see from a snap count perspective. Yeah. I look at Debo this week in the same vein as Chenault. If Tark misses, uh, both players should be really involved. So I guess you could take your shot there. On the other side of the football, the four and one running Rams. Uh, what do you do with Goff? Uh, you. I think you get out of the court this week. Oh, okay. Yeah, I get the King's I get what you're court. Saying. King yeah. Goff. It's hard when you sit near Judge Giamatti to not think of just that court. Ah, fair enough. But um, no, I get what you're saying. So you're you're out on Jared Goff this week, even though Ryan Fitzpatrick just destroyed them last week. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. Out, out. I think he's uh, an okay play. If you know, it, uh, I, you're not going to. Uh, I don't think this is one of those zero games where all, everything is a rushing touchdown. If you look at this team so far, the San Francisco 49ers have been pretty darn good against running backs. So if it's difficult for the running Rams to really make headway there, and we saw last week, Goff looked great. I think they could make you know with with no Richard Sherman, kind of a beat up secondary. I think Goff could be okay, but I I do agree with you, Mike. He's more of a of a you know if you're in a two quarterback league, that's where I'd want to start him versus having him be my main guy. But let me ask you this: Goff or Minshew without Chark? Oh, oh that's Goff. Yeah, I I lean Goff there as well. And I, I mean, on top of that, you have it's this is a divisional matchup, so this is a the Forty ers know the Rams very well. Let me talk to you guys about the running back position for Los Angeles right now because it's difficult. We yes, Jason just called them the running Rams. Now, Daryl Henderson has been the most viable starter for them, and last week he scored twice. But let me highlight this for you. He had uh, 43% of the snaps. The week before, 39%. The week before, 49%. The week before, 42%. So every single week, we know it's going to come down to efficiency. Now, he scored. I mean, he scored uh, his three top 12 weeks. You know, he scored in all of them, including two last week, finishing at number six at the position. I I assume Henderson would be the one to start. But how are you feeling? I mean, not not great. <laughs> but I, What about but, you, Jay? But with bye weeks and injuries, Daryl Henderson is... He's a low end running back too. Yeah, if, if if I have to pick a Ram to start, it would absolutely be Henderson. He's been the most valuable. He's had the most carries. Yada yada yada. It's a bad matchup, and Cam Akers was dealing with injury. He is back, and they're talking about it, McVay has specifically said we we want to get Akers more involved. And we've already seen this season after a great game and heavy utilization of Daryl Henderson. Having him take a back seat, having, you know, this week, now he gets more rest as Malcolm Brown gets more work. So if all of a sudden in this bad matchup, it becomes let's give Cam Akers more work, get him the most touches in this game, nobody's going to be surprised. So can you play Henderson? Yes, due to volume and history. Do I want to play Henderson? No. If I've got a better pivot option, I would rather look elsewhere. Woods and Cup are in your lineups, as always. Uh, they're at wide receiver 9 and 13 on the week. Uh, that would be Cup at 9. Woods at 13. Again, tougher matchup, but we saw what happened last week. And, uh, you know, the year-long numbers for the 49ers defense, they don't – they kind of betray what we saw last week. Preston Williams had a great game. Parker had a great game. Gaskin had a great game. Again, it's a divisional matchup. I agree with Mike. It's going to uh, – it, it's going to be a fight, but it's a 52-point over-under. Higby, though. Higby has Oof. been really disappointing. Gerald Everett was the better tight end last week. Yep. Are you trying to – are you going the Hooper route, the uh, – Hawkinson, I would say that Gasicki. Yes, yes yeah, I would. All of those. I Higby, Ingram. Higby. I would. I would play Ingram over. Is them, inflated yeah. by his three touchdown game. I mean, obviously that was that was great. It was phenomenal. It was this season. It's not like Higby doesn't have the ability to do that all of a sudden. But if you're looking at you know the the target volume, his 16 game pace is 48 uh, receptions on the year. So it's it's not a not a reliable player. All right, this one's going to be exciting, guys. Monday night or Monday afternoon, depending on where you're at. The Kansas City Chiefs at 4-1 and one, taking on the Buffalo Bills at 4-1. and one. Chiefs are four-point favorites in this game. It's a 57.5 <laughs> over, <laughs> under. And, yeah, baby. And uh, this is this is one of those find, find the players not to play type of matchups, which is always great for fantasy football. It's fun. The Chiefs are coming off a loss. They decided to respond to their loss by signing Le'Veon Bell. The, the Bills, Bills are, are coming off a loss. That's right. 
they decided to respond by having a great game against the Chiefs. I, I think both teams are phenomenal here. If you want to find a player not to start, I'm looking straight towards Devin Singletary, Let's Zach say the, Moss. The, the Buffalo running backs, Jason, how are you handling those two guys? We don't we don't know for sure if Zach Moss is going to play. He, he was the, you know, quote, full participant in the walkthrough. We've seen Moss practicing li limited the last couple of weeks, but then eventually ruled out. Do you, what's your confidence on Moss playing? Your confidence in playing Devin Singletary if he if Moss is actually out? Um, running right now, Kansas City twenty third against fantasy running backs. Yeah, I mean they, they're they're better against the pass than they are against the run. More of a funnel type of defense. And I think Singletary is a talented player. I still do. It doesn't always work out for fantasy. Um, so I'm I'm preferring to not play either. I think he's in the same class as Daryl Henderson, where I don't really want to play him. You can put them in the lineup. Whenever there's a game with this many points, there's a chance at a, a you know a rushing touchdown. The problem is probably not going to be uh you know Singletary as, uh, for a rushing touchdown. It's going to be Josh Allen or possibly Zach Moss. So I'm I'm looking to avoid those those backs. But I want just about everyone else in this game. Devin Singletary is going to have 12 to 15 opportunities against the Chiefs in this game. And so what he does with them a couple weeks ago, RB2 stuff. Mm -hmm. Last week there was a lot of Yeldon and he still had 12 opportunities. It's just you're not super enthusiastic about what you've seen on the field. Clyde, the swan song, Stephon Diggs, of course. You know, last week, you know, we talked. I feel like this one's on you. I mean, I get the Fantasy Reaper. Uh, conversation all the time Jason but last week you jinxed this Chiefs defense you came out oh I know you I came totally out and you said did. that they you said that they can completely stop the pass we need to finally give them the 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 deserved respect and then here Nelson Aguilar and Henry Ruggs go absolutely ham I uh, literally use those words that I'm finally going to give them the respect they deserve because they lock down wide receivers and I always go oh, well the you know the the Chiefs are going to be up there's going to be so many points that wide receivers will have to be used and that never works. And as soon as I trust it, I just didn't see how good Derek Carr was. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Uh, that being said, Diggs is the type of player where you can't possibly sit him. And I think John Brown, uh, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and start the receiving options here. Whenever you have got a game 57 and a half point over under, you're going to have enough fantasy points from, you know, Cole Beasley. He'll get his, you know, if you're in a PPR league, he'll get his receptions. Um, but I obviously I would I would order them Stephon Diggs as a must start, John Brown as a can start, and Cole Beasley as a break glass in case of emergency. And McCall Hardman is at wide receiver twenty seven on the week right now. He's Jason's taking it to a hundred player, uh, according to Mike Taglier. Hardman's twelve point six two yards per target is the highest mark of all time among receivers with fifty plus targets. He is the one touch man. He can get you a win with one big play. And with the over under where it's at, no Sammy Watkins, you could do worse than McCole Hardman this week. We do have a breaking report. Uh, I will not hit the button for this one. Let me let me hit a different button for, All right. you, for you. Yeah. Uh, so Field Yates reporting the Patriots will be canceling their Friday practice after a positive COVID 19 test. So they will have to confirm. If that test is a positive or a false positive, but here we are. He's a par, oh, Melvin, par Gordon, the Melvin Gordon's going to be so mad. <laughs> they, he, is it? Oh I mean, it's my. the same matchup. Oh, man. Yeah. All right, our final matchup, the Cardinals 3-2, and two, the Cowboys 2-3. and three. This is a Monday night football game. The Cardinals are one-point road favorites. It's a 54.5 point over under. Cowboys, Andy Dalton gets to make his uh, starting debut. And this one should be this one should be a good game. This is interesting. Yes. Yeah. Um, these are two fast-paced teams. Uh, at least before Andy Dalton took over, Dallas was number one in seconds per play point, uh, plays per game. Uh, the pace of play while they're trailing, and they are not favored at home in this game. Arizona is favored, although it's close. And Arizona number seven in seconds per play. This should be a game with a lot of opportunity. Kyler Murray has been outstanding. Offensive player of the week last week in the NFC. Andy Dalton went 9 for 11. It's nice to see those stats after he came in. 9 for 11 for 111 yards last week. Was one of the best insurance policies at quarterback of any team in football. So 
Uh, Dallas has to move forward in a winnable division with Andy Dalton. So we've talked quite a bit about the implications of this uh, injury to Dak and what we would do with this wide receiver core. You know, I we've got to see it on the field, but you can sure. have an opportunity against Arizona. Yeah, it, you do have the opportunity here. For the wide receivers, uh, look, Mari Cooper is playing for you. CeeDee Lamb is playing for you until proven otherwise. Michael Gallup is a bench. Just see what happens. Uh, honestly, the, the biggest question for me uh, for the Dallas offense is Dalton Schultz. What do we do? We we know that Dak Prescott heavily utilized the tight end position. Dalton Schultz came away with a with a real fantasy stinker last week. Jay, what is your confidence level in Dalton Schultz? Who I mean, like before that, you know, ten targets, six, eight. He's and, he's with Michael Gallup. To me. It, it, what I'm saying with at the tight end position is he around Mike Gesicki or is no where much is lower. his level? He's he's much lower than Gesicki. He is someone that I think can be rostered and benched. Take a wait and see approach from your bench because we don't know what Dalton's tendencies will be, how this offense will oh, change. Dalton how much, to Dalton. How much more they'll uh you know they'll they'll run the ball and and slow the pace of play. So Gallup is on my bench, Dalton Schultz is on my bench. Okay. I agree with you the other two wide receivers are in and Dalton can be streamed even though it's primetime Dalton, which is always a scary proposition. Kenyon Drake, guys, what do we think? Uh Ooh, you know, if I boy. had to play Kenyon Drake or some of these other options like Singletary or or Daryl Henderson. Oh, that's Drake. I would take Drake over them. What about Antonio Gibson? The number two most popular start sit question this week: Antonio Gibson or Kenyon Drake? I would take Gibson. Oh, all right. Chase Edmonds is one of the most enigmatic fantasy options because he's had three weeks of top tw uh, three weeks inside the top twenty-one at the position. He was eighth last week against the Jets. Dallas, we know what their defense is not doing, and yet nobody feels very confident playing Chase Edmonds. With the success he's seen, we talked last week, Jason, you brought up something's going to change in this offense. Edmonds saw all the targets. Can you flex Chase Edmonds? I think you can flex him in a full PPR, PPR league. Yeah. What I about mean, you... single Terrier Edmonds in a full PPR? Um, that's, that's interesting. In a full PPR, I... I, I, I'm probably still going to be a sucker and go for the total touches, the total opportunities, which would be Singletary. But it, it's it's worth realizing that we need to start looking at Chase Edmonds like a James White type. He's more of a receiver than he is a running back because, you know, he's look, look at the last four weeks, three rushing attempts, three rush attempts, four rush attempts, three rush attempts. I don't want to play that in fantasy, but the last two weeks he's had five receptions in mm -hmm. both games, six targets. He is – the passing down back. So. Highest, highest snap percentage of the season. He had been averaging right around 35, and he shot up to 45% this past week. So I, I'm, a, I'm with Jason. If you're in a full PPR, you can flex him, but it's it's hard to get really excited about a running back who's averaging just over eight opportunities a game. It's interesting, though, having highlighted the Henderson snap counts and the Edmonds snap counts being very similar in the offense. So uh, always a shot with Chase Edmonds. But if Drake's going to perform, this is going to be a week that needs to do it. Right. Yeah. All right. Anything else from this game? Play no, you're not. You're not going to play Kirk. Even he, he could have a good game, but you're not going to be able to play it from what's been seen. Not going to be able to play Larry. I think it's Hopkins, and we we cover the running backs. Of course, Kyler will be in. All right, Bruce Arians. This is a little injury update from Brooksy. He said that uh, Bruce Arians came out said that Godwin should be able to play on Sunday. They asked Bruce Arians which players were game time decisions, and he did list Mike Evans once again in that list, along with Scotty Miller, Leonard Fournette. Evans should be out there. Yeah, and this just reinforces I'm not playing Scotty Miller. And then uh, Adrian Peterson is back in the building. Oh, so that's you know maybe get out on the field too. Maybe who knows? Prop it like it's hot. Presented by Monkey Knife Fight. All right, I enjoy this segment each and every week. It's uh, been pretty fun to identify some of these player props that we really like from Monkey Knife Fight. And uh, I'll kick it off. Feel Josh free. Allen. Josh Allen, the Monday Night Football game. 
The line is set at 253.5 passing yards. This game has a... Oh, man. Yeah, you hadn't seen that one, huh? I had not said that's a good pick, Andy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Josh Allen has done it. Uh, the 253.5 line, he has yet to fail hitting that on the entirety of this entire season. The entirety of this entire season. <laughs> that's right. I was, I was hoping you Oh, no, you're not going to get me. I'm going to get myself. <laughs> you're not getting me first. If you haven't played uh, Monkey Knife Fight with us yet this year... I'm just going to go out and say this is a real good time to get in because I, I feel like that's a mistake. 253 and a half passing yards? On a 57 and a half over under game in a, in a game where Mahomes' line is set at 319. So uh, John Brown should be back, which is great. It helps. And uh, Josh Allen, this game's going to come down to that defensive line for the Chiefs. If, they can, if Josh Allen stands there the way he got to stand there this past week and gets to chuck it downfield mm – -hmm. They're going to have some big plays. So I'm going to take the more, believe it or not. That would have been great if all that set up <laughs> and I took less for Josh Allen at the end of it, but I'm yeah. going to go more. That would be funny. All right, Jamison Crowder, Jamison Target. Crowder. The only, <laughs> the only feasible offensive weapon on the New York Jets currently. The more or less is set at 68 and a half receiving yards. For some context, uh, my man, Jamie Crowder is averaging over a hundred yards a game. They are they are heavy dogs in this matchup against in all matchups in, in this matchup and probably every single week for the rest of the year. But I will absolutely be taking the more for Jamison Crowder. And for me, I'm doubling down on my Ronald Jones start of the week. Uh, the matchup is great, right? Green Bay is tied with Carolina when it comes to fantasy points given up to the running back. Rojo gets most of his fantasy points on the ground. The line looks like it is 67 and a half rushing yards. I am taking more than that as he's had more than 100 the last two weeks. Our premium projections put him at 76.2 rushing yards. Uh, I'm taking the more. <laughs> that was that was M O A R. Your last name? Oh, oh okay. M O A R. Mo R. Is yeah. that how you spell your last name? Mo That's right. Okay. Jason M O A R. I always like uh, when you go more or less on a player at the running back position. I like it when it's somebody that is explosive and can have one play that's 40, 50 yards. You're not just trying to, you know, dink and dunk a Devonta Freeman type of performance. So I feel like you're uh, you're talking to Mike here on that Jamison Crowder. <laughs> that's oh. that's tough. Yeah, I, that line is. I would take the more too, Mike, but not by a lot. Not by a lot. I will, I will take it. Joe Flacco. Uh, check out Monkey Knife Fight this week. Ballerspicks.com is where you go. Ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. You get a 100% deposit match up to $50 on Monkey Knife Fight. We did it, fellas. We made it through the week six matchups. Oof, we did. Only one COVID surprise report in the middle of it. That is impressive. Yeah, hopefully that goes away tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and I will see you on Sunday. Foot Clan for Sunday Live answering all your last second questions. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, remember this message from our friends at NHTSA. If you're stopped at a railway crossing, the signals are flashing. You don't see the train or it looks like it's moving slow. Just wait it out. If, even if the engineer sees you and applies the brakes right away, it can take a mile over or take a train over a mile to stop. Be safe. Do the smart thing. Stop. Trains can't.